Hi, this is Alyssa Patterson, and this will be my virtual biography about Pierre de Fermat. So a little bit of background information about Fermat. He's French, and he was born in 1607 and died in 1665. He was fluent in classical Greek, Latin, Italian, Spanish, and Occitan. He was married to his cousin when he was 23, and he married her when he she was 15. Um, he actually wasn't a mathematician first. He was actually a lawyer. He went to law school and got his degree from the University of Orleans. And he became part of the parliament at Toulouse in 1634. So some different areas of math that he was involved in included calculus, theory of numbers, analytic ge geometry, and probability. So something that I thought was really interesting about Fermat is that he very rarely did he give demonstrations or proofs of his results, and he didn't really give explanations for why he got what he got. He just kind of said, yep, this is what I have, and left it at that. And so a lot of proofs that are done of his work are by Leibniz and Euler. So they're not actually his proofs, but it's from his work. And then Fermat's lesser theorem is that if p is a prime number, and if a is any positive integer, then a to the p minus a is divisible by p. And then his greater last theorem is x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n, where x, y, z, and n are all positive integers, and there is no solution if n is any greater than 2. And he never showed that this was solved, he just said that this was one of his theorems. And it was one that remained unsolved for a while, and it wasn't solved until the late 20th century. Um, something else that he also did was he generalized the equation for a parabola at a times y equals x squared. And for a rectangular hyperbola, xy equals a squared. Uh, he found formulas for the areas underneath the curve. So it's equivalent to the formula that we use now in calculus to find the integral. Um, he talked about the law of least time, which is about like waves and how the path that might seem the most direct might not be the fastest path. And so one way that this was shown later on was with ants walking in a path. And so if you have them walking in two different, like on two different materials, so they could be walking on wood and then on grass. And so if they are walking in what seems like the most direct line, it might be slower than if they walk at a certain angle and then switch off into a different ray. And then the idea of the probability with Pascal was him and Pascal were writing letters back and forth to each other. And this was actually in the movie that I watched for last month's assignment. And so it was in prediction by the numbers. And the game that they talked about was, say that there are two players, player A and player B. They're going to flip the coin, and it's best of five. If it's heads, A gets a point. If it's tails, B gets a point. They're playing the game, and they flip three times, and A is winning two to one. If the game gets cut off right there, how do they split up the pot? And so Fermat said that they just had to look at all future outcomes that are possible. And that if you look at that, then there's three ways that player A could win. And then there's only one way that player B could win at that point. And so they should split the pot three to one. And so he was like one of the first people to talk about the idea of future outcomes because it wasn't really thought of at that point. Well, thanks for listening. Thank you.